This episode is sponsored by Geordie Jars, Chicago's favorite cake in a jar. Geordie Jars ship nationwide from GeordieJars.com, and we are the home of the first cake in a jar vending machine, which is located inside of Lacuna Lofts at 2150 South Canal Port. Follow me on Instagram at Geordie Jars and my personal Instagram at Xjordinary. Hey guys, welcome to episode three of the Mommy's Anonymous podcast. So, guys, Dallas got into a fight yesterday. Um, he is in first grade. He's just turned seven. And um, now he's at a place at um, in his life, I think, where he's having a power struggle. You are the oldest one out of the bunch at your house, and then you're the youngest one of the bunch in your school. So I think that he's kind of like not used to not being in charge. So he kind of been having a little bit of issues with peers as of late but when when Dez picked him up from after school yesterday um the instructor let him know that Dallas got into a little tussle you know these kids like to tussle uh the second grader was telling Dallas that he didn't have the right to look at the computer and I just once Dez told me that that's what was said I instantly know why Dallas is going to retaliate because Dallas knows his rights and he knows he has the right to do whatever he you know, within his his means, this is a school property. That baby probably told him this is school property and your name isn't on it. I already know, I already know what he said. But this got me and Dez like thinking, what? how are we punishing our kids and how are we disciplining them? Um, what are our intentions with them? What type of lessons are we trying to teach them? Um, you know, across the board, we need to be on a team and these are some of the things you need to discuss before having kids with people, but we're here already. And so, you know, it's... it's um, it's an issue that me and Dez do agree on, so it's not hard, but I couldn't imagine if we had different views on how to discipline them. So the title of this episode is Law and Order. I'm dead. Uh, so first and foremost, with Dallas, he's been coming home and telling us, well, like, you know, how was your day at school, Dallas? And he says, well, I only got mad two times. I I really don't understand why that it's every single day he gets so angry that he he's having a hard time regulating his temperature he's having a hard time being able to see what's not a big deal and what is a big deal so he will you know push a chair over or something so that's a red flag to any parent and we are trying to navigate how to talk him through this frustration and maybe like him blowing off steam we really don't know what to do because why are you that mad about a pencil you know what I'm, it's little stuff like that so we we always try to ask him well what happened and make sure we let him know that his feelings are valid why he is getting upset but a lot of his issues he is very very witty uh for a seven-year-old and that kind of will get him into a little bit of trouble i'm sure if he you know doesn't learn how to control how things make you feel like you have to be able to control yourself so that's something that we're trying to deal with with our he's our oldest so this is the first one in line and we don't really know what we're doing but Dez just signed him up for basketball next week so we can try to see if that will help him running around will get, exert some extra energy he'll be around another set of kids not the same after school and you know school age kids and then the babies so just a change of pace um, with our routine might help him not be so mad with these kids like I'm, I don't understand Dez though is he's played sports all of his life and I think that might have been one of his ways to get his anger out and maybe he wasn't a, that angry of a kid because he played sports so a lot of our kids who are at this really weird age right now where they've been in the house because of COVID and all those things we had to cancel soccer and basketball we've been trying to sign him up for things since he came of age to be signed up for sports at five and so pushing those things off I kind of think may have maybe have stunted his uh emotional like how he how he regulates with other kids how he uh interacts with them other kids have logic as well so when he's talking to other kids they have they're coming from a different upbringing they have different more their parents teach them different things we parent one way and other kids parents are going to obviously parent a different way and he's not used to having anybody going against him the babies don't talk so you know what dallas says goes and that brings up another topic what do you guys do 
when your older kids start fighting and tussling with your younger kids? Who do you get mad at? Who do you punish? Like, I get furious with him when he hits Denim or something or they're fighting and he hits him a little too hard and it's the baby. So now you're hitting my baby and that's really wild. And I don't know who to be mad at because if I yell at anybody, Denim is going to start crying as well. So now I've ruined the entire mood of the day just trying to be mad at somebody. But I have a hard time putting like even regulating my own anger so when Dallas gets mad I'm like okay I understand why you would be mad if some if things don't go your way I get just as mad um and maybe that's immature of me but I do understand so we're very um we're understanding when Dallas gets frustrated and kind of lashes out I won't say lash because he's not violent but he is explosive um I'm trying to learn how to better parent that I I don't have the answers right now um, a lot of positive parenting pages have been helping trying to redirect them and, you know, talking things out with the kids and not not yelling, not raising your voice. They say, like, don't, you know, don't give the equal reaction to the children that they're giving you They're you know, but oftentimes when the babies fall out having a tantrum, I want to fall out, too. Like, I want to have a tantrum. I want to cry as well. We're all crying. I'm angry too. You guys are making all the noise. I'm frustrated. So I I don't know. This episode is really about what I don't know. I'm really asking a lot of questions here. I have no idea. I just can pull from my experience. And when I think about crime and punishment, how effective is prison in the grand scheme of things? Like that's how I feel about spanking kids. How effective is this gonna be if I'm telling you, okay, don't hit that kid when you're angry, and then when I'm angry, I hit that kid. How do we, you know, but you know, then I'm telling you, well, mommy can hit, but not you. Now that that doesn't seem right. So things that don't make sense, I understand and I can make sense to Dallas either. The whole excuse that parents use because I said so. I, I don't I never like that excuse when I was growing up and I don't like to use it with my kids because I do have a reason um, a lot of parents do have reasons but you don't feel like explaining it but I think me taking the time to explain my reasons helps Dallas understand and control himself I'm telling you mommy doesn't want to play because mommy is tired because I just made however many jars um, so I this is too loud for me for you to be listening to this tablet right here next to me Like that's too loud because it's too much going on. He'll understand. So it's not just like get away Dallas That doesn't feel like I'm being mean to him. I'm just explaining what I'm dealing with as well. So um, I think parents don't really feel like they have to explain themselves to their kids and you don't have to but you don't have to do anything but doing everything with intention, you know the odds are more in your favor to raise a more emotionally intelligent child if you let them know you're, you have emotions too. I, I want my kids to see me as an emotional being, not that they have a choice because I cry constantly, but I want them to see me as an emotional being. I have feelings, I have hurts, I get tired too, just like you guys do. When you're frustrated and I say you need to go take a nap, you go take a 10 minute walk away, when I get frustrated, I want to say, look, Dallas, let me go take a 10 minute breather because I'm too frustrated to handle this right now. And that might be just what you need. Go take a break. Go sit down. Go lock yourself in the bathroom. Um, the babies hate that. The babies hate when you tell them you need a break. They don't care about any of that. They, they want to be inside of your skin and scream and be mad. So parenting is not something like how I said me and dads are trying to come up with the plan. I don't think the plan is going to work for all of our kids. Like right now, I have no idea how the punishment thing works with the other two or how they'll receive it because every kid is different. But so far, Dallas just needs a lot of explanation. Um, the babies don't listen. And when do kids start to listen? What age is that? Well, two, like what? So I ask that because once the kids start to listen, then you can start to discipline and tell them, you know, this is a rule. If I, like, the phase that Dash is in, it's like, no, Dash, don't do that. And then he just looks at you like a baby looks at you. But Denim will look at you, holds up the thing you said don't, ha don't touch, and, you know, continues to play with it or puts it down. So Denim is two. So it seems like this is like the age where we start implementing the timeout chairs, I guess, because what, what else am I supposed to do? I don't want to, I really don't want to spank the kids. 
that's not my goal. Um, I never got a spanking, but I was perfect as a child. I didn't really get in trouble. I'm just kidding. I was not. What I um, I want to know your experience with the timeout chair and if it is effective. Does it even work, or do they just process that as you telling them to sit in another chair that they always sit in? Like, is there a specific chair, or is that like we have? We don't have a lot of space for all these random, you know, this is a pot. We have two potties, two little chairs, but now we have to have an additional timeout chair because and I, because of the fact that I don't want them to think that that chair is a punishment chair, if that's your dinner chair as well. So when Dallas was a baby and like a toddler, I would put him in his crib when I was upset, right? Or when he was acting out or having a tantrum. But then I felt like he started to associate his crib with being on punishment. You know, that, and I'm like, I think that was kind of productive. I think I, I messed that up with him because he never wanted to be in the crib anymore because you're not in trouble. So I don't know, that was a parenting fail, but I was 21. So um, I don't really know how effective it is, but I could see Dash doesn't listen. He won't sit for now, but Dinah might listen. So I'm going to try that and I'm going to let y'all know if that, you know, how much that worked. Do you guys feel like your kids respect you or the daddy more? Like, who do you think they get scared of? They don't want to, you know, I'm about to call your daddy. I'm going to tell your daddy about you. I'm going to tell. And then they tighten up. Who is it? Because it's certainly not me in my house. They don't. They will look at me and not care. They'll look at this like, who? Who about to come do something? I don't, I don't like to. I don't feel like I'm a mean mommy because I try not to be the mean mommy. Like I'm very, very, very intentional about if I only see these kids for two hours at the end of the day, I don't wanna be telling y'all, like being, you know, being mean to them. I only see y'all for a couple hours and now when I come around, I'm the one that's the disciplinarian. Now you gotta, you know, you can't sit here, you can't watch TV, you can't eat a snack. Like I, I really don't care. Um, they're little right now and I think that being nice to them, not nice that when they're doing bad things, but, there are some rules that I think parents use or have that don't make any sense, um, like candy for, or like eating a cookie for breakfast, for instance. I really do not care. Like what you just say no just because, and you just say no because you know you're not supposed to have a cookie, but why not? Literally, why not? If a donut is the same exact thing, but since it's breakfast, you know. It, so for me, instead of just saying no because that's the instinct of this is kids don't eat sweets for breakfast, it's been beaten into your head like cookie crisp. I've never been allowed to buy cookie crisp in my life. Why not? My mom said that's not breakfast food, it's cookies. I would have loved a cookie crisp or two. But now I let my kids get whatever type of cereal they want because it's breakfast. It doesn't matter. Like it just, that's not. I'll choose my battles, if you will. So now, when we have to talk to Dallas about an issue at school, we could talk about that. I wasn't just yelling at you, you know, about something random, like, you know, stupid stuff, putting your stuff away. I'm not the most tidy mom either. I don't feel like putting away the laundry either. So when the kids leave something around, it's hard for me to reinforce my rules because I don't follow them either. So knowing that, I can't just say, clean up, clean up, clean up, if... You know, I don't really give you much. Uh, I don't give you the example that you need all the time because you very well may be too tired to clean up too. Give them the same break that you give yourself and they're not just little little slaves that you birth. They're not just people that are here for you to discipline them. You don't have to come up with rules for no reason. Um, there's gonna be a time where there's a lot of rules and a lot of you have a curfew and you have to, the time for rules and regulations comes and I don't know how what age that starts, but I don't think it starts underneath seven. You know, you don't have a phone yet. You don't have a, you know, the bedtime. It can be loosey goosey. You de denim gets laid down at seven thirty and doesn't go to sleep till after ten. But you stay in your room. He sneaks out to say I love you every now and then. But do how mad do we get from that? Like how angry do we yell at him and give him a spanking, tell him lay down and don't come out your room, or do we let him rock and you're the one that's gonna be tired in the morning? Granted very annoying maybe if we had a couple more rules they would be sleeping but for me avoiding the tears I will do anything I will go any length to not have a single tear in the house between me and the kids but yelling I'm a yelling mom I will say that I do raise my voice 
but it's only because our house is like super duper loud all the time. I feel like I'm in a torture chamber of baby noises. And so you have to be a little louder. You got to elevate that voice, but it does make them cry more. So when I try to, you know, alert somebody to stop jumping off the couch, now all of the babies start crying because I've raised my voice. So now that's one of the reasons why I don't discipline as much as maybe I should because my form of discipline is to yell and get your attention so you can stop doing whatever you're doing. I don't want them to be afraid of me though. Uh, I don't wanna be the type of parent that is my kids fear I want you to come and talk to me about anything and no I'm not don't be afraid you know you might be a little nervous about what you're about to say but as long as you're about to say it to me I would love that like Dallas is coming to us saying little things like these kids at school been talking about some gay stuff and I'm like talking about what he's like gay stuff I'm like, well, what kind of gay stuff? And he was like, you know, when girls like girls and boys like boys, that type of stuff. And I'm like, oh, well, I mean, what do you think about it? He says, uh, he's, like, I, he's like, it's fine with me. I don't know. He was like, I'm a, I don't know. But that was it. I just, he didn't really have much to follow up, but I do like that you were just talking to me about what's going on in school. Just feel like you can come to me. This is stuff that you and your little first grade friends have been chatting about. I would like to know. So... I don't think you don't know anything about or don't know that word. I'm curious to know the type of things that his friends are talking about without me being like, don't ever say the word gay. Like, I don't want to be like that. And then he's going to be afraid of me because he's like, dang, I was just telling you what they said. This is a quote. This is, you know, I was just letting you know what the, what the word on the street is. But Dallas is a really innocent child. Like, he he's the oldest. He's not around any other kids. He's also a COVID kid. He hasn't been in school around a bunch of other influences. So there aren't, there haven't been many kids to be like uh, trying to sway him one way or another yet. He's seven, but I want him to come to us when that time comes and he has friends and they're discussing things. I would like for you just to pull your dad aside and be like, this guy's about to do this or something just to build the relationship with them of trust and um, being open with them, like I said, about my emotions and how I feel and telling them what's going on with work and with, you know, this is what me and daddy are doing at work today. We have a really big order. We have this, we have that. Then he will be, will tell us about our, his day too. And then it's not like pulling teeth when we're asking him how his day is. And now I'm not getting mad when you won't, you know, explain more. Like, how do you forget what you did all day? But I want him to tell us really how his day is going and without him thinking we're gonna get mad, even though he knows when we hear that you only got mad two times a day or, you know, I did get a little frustrated today, you know we're gonna be disappointed and we're gonna try to redirect and try to tell you how you could have done things a little bit differently, but we're not gonna be mad. You're not gonna get in trouble. You're not gonna be on punishment because you're seven. So there's that. But Dez and I are like a united front against the kids. And I think that's really important to have that power structure and not us against each other not like Dad saying well your mama said you can't watch tv because then it's like dang you said it too i don't we did, can they watch tv or can they not like we we have we are on the same accord even if he don't understand why i'm saying something he'll still be like you know no you can't do it because such and such and such and it's not because mommy said so it's because these are the rules of our house and so that's important for our kids to see and we are in agreement we talked about it we are you hear the same verbiage across the board when he's having issues at school or anywhere we talk to the other adults involved to hear what you guys are saying to him so we can reinforce these things and we can know what you guys are pouring into our child you know we don't want to hear there's some schools that spank kids now this might be old school because i went I'm, th I'm thinking about when i was in kindergarten I remember them hitting kids with a with a a ruler. What type? Of, what what is that? I I don't even know how I feel if I heard that. I don't even hit my own kids, and I don't feel like you should hit my kids either. But if those are the rules, then what do you do? Kit pull them out the school? That seems dramatic, but I don't know. I I want to know how you guys feel about other people punishing your kids or disciplining them, like when they go to a babysitter's house or grandma's house and they have different rules than you you practice gentle parenting and they practice old school get out of my face parenting and I you know then you have to decide who who your babysitters are 
and who your people are who you don't want your kids to be afraid to go places and not you not want you to leave them you know because this person their rules are more strict in their house but you want to teach them to respect other people but by respecting themselves first so Dallas I don't you're not going over here you know I'm not telling you not to write on somebody's wall because that's you know I just want you you know not to do that so I'm not it's not because they said so and this this house is so strict you don't do that at anybody's house you don't do that at our house you don't do that at you know it's not because you go over here and you got to tighten up I don't like that it's just like a little bit of fear associated with that but I think our older generation like that like I hear people say my kids had the fear of God or whatever and it's like is that right? Is that normal? Because I want to have the fear in God and God, um, mainly. But they love to say that one and, you know, forget about all the other implications. And it's hard. It's hard unlearning these things because we turned out semi-okay with those strict rules. So it's hard to, you know, feel like that was a weird way to be taught and a weird way to be like a rough way to be raised but look at us so we turned out okay but we're still trying to rewrite it so how are our kids going to turn out it's like not knowing what's going to happen you know um i was i don't know i don't know i just it's it's like a case study we're doing it right now we're in the case study we are trying to figure out how, what positive parenting does we're going to have all these kids on um a documentary in 20 years like where are they now all the kids that were you know it's just like when people have the scared straight situation. Y'all watch scared straight? That's that's crazy. Insane. Go to scared straight. You're a bad kid and they're bad like 13 year old stealing and they send you to prison to tell you not and they yell at you and they scream at you and curse at you and you know all of that so that you are too afraid to go to prison. I don't, mm -mm. I don't, I disagree. I strongly disagree with that. I don't think that you should be, that's like negative it's negative. You're telling me what not to do. I'd rather you take me to some place. Like if somebody, okay, this is very, I don't want to even say this, but if somebody were to bring their young daughter who was stealing up to my bakery to a fine establishment to talk to somebody who didn't do things like that, or may, I did used to steal. So if you talk to somebody who was a former thief, I, I sold some lip gloss, y'all, so please don't take it like that, and say this is what she's been able to do with her life rather than saying, don't keep stealing or you're about to go to prison. I feel like there are ways to redirect your message without it seeming negative. I don't, it's not like, if I'm stealing, it's not because I'm thinking about the fact that I'm about to go to prison. I'm thinking about whatever I want right now. And so if you're also thinking about what you want right now, something in the future, you want kids to get to where you are or get to a different place, you tell them, you know, it's more encouraging. It's more positive reinforcement rather than just negative. Like, don't do this, don't do this, because you should be afraid to do this, this, and this. So the verdict is still out if this is going to work. Um, but I don't see why it wouldn't. I don't see why pouring into your children and being intentional with your children would ever turn out negatively. They can't possibly, you know, doing everything with intention and like, I, I talked, I, I do things wrong sometimes. Um, a lot of times I yell, like I said, I yell all the time, but I do go back and apologize. I do make a point of telling Dallas if I've yelled at him or said like, Dallas, get it. And it wasn't even him that did it. I make sure I said, look, I thought you did it, but Tootie did it, I'm sorry. So he's not just sitting around mad at me because I know I'd be kicking the air and stuff. My mom said, you know, some Julia did something and said I did it. I'm pissed. I can't even double back and tell you because now I'm telling on him. But if ever there was a situation where you go back and apologize, then now your kid's not just feeling that how they would feel for the rest of the day. Because I know how I feel when people yell at me. You tell me to close something too loud. You say, do something too loud, I'm crying. Because now I feel like you've yelled at me. And that's, you know, I don't, I don't like yelling. And so when I do it, I feel bad. I do like to apologize. And um, my patience, I don't really know if I have it. I, I guess I am patient, but I don't feel patient while I'm in it. I feel very impatient while I'm completing all the things and while I'm dealing with the kids. I'm, I feel like patient people are not struggling with it. I feel like I'm struggling with all the things that I'm handling well, but the lack of patience makes it feel impossible to get through an evening with the kids because I don't feel like I have enough patience, but somehow I do make it. So does that make me patient? I don't know. We're going to see. I, I feel like teaching kids how to forgive, the easiest way to teach them is by forgiving them and not holding old things over their head. 
I feel like if we were to tell Dallas, like, well, you can't go to after school next week because you be, you know, fighting niggas. I mean, people, I can't say that. You keep letting him do things I mean, within reason. You guys know what I'm saying. But I don't want him, I don't want to hold punishments against him against him and hold different situations against him so he doesn't feel like he can make another mistake and make a million mistakes with me forgiving him make a, you know I'm gonna be here I don't care what you do I want you know we're gonna talk about it hopefully you don't make it the the second time but you might you know it's like kind of learning how to love your children with the grace of God um, instead of wanting them to have the fear of God you know with you so as you guys know I have three boys so I'm not gonna be able to answer this question but who do you think is easier to discipline when it comes to you know how do you get to you know how rough are you not rough me like that but do you spank your daughters and your sons or do you just spank your sons um, do you do you see that you are more gentle with your sons or your daughters? And I, I'm really curious about that, so I'm definitely going to ask um, that in the poll. The way, the way, from my experience, the only way I can look at it is from, you know, being raised in my house with my two brothers. I have an older brother who is two years older than me and a younger brother who's eight years younger. And um, they raised us, I think they pretty much raised us the same in a way like we had the same rules but I didn't I chose not to break rules I was I feel like I was blindly obedient for the most part but I never got a spanking before but I was really 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 a I was like I said blindly obedient but I was afraid of like all punishments in general I was afraid of getting a spanking like hearing Julian get a spanking I don't ever want to do anything to land me there like I'm not trying to be on that side of the door you know so that I kind of was afraid just to do anything but we weren't bad kids at all we didn't I never snuck out the house ever I never took a car I never you know maybe a little talking back and and that type of stuff but our punishments were a little bit more creative um, my mom was a stay-at-home mom she had a lot more time to come up with very creative um, punishments for things like I, I'll share some examples, but she she just was coming up with the wildest. Like, who would even come up with this? Normal people would just say you, you're on punishment for a couple weeks or whatever or days, but it would just be like write a letter and then you know read it out loud and then you know whatever. It's like my goodness. Like I remember, I, like I said, I stole something before. I stole some lip gloss and I was so terrified, terrified, y'all. I didn't know what they were gonna do when they found out on the ten o'clock news that this little girl in this blue outfit stole from Ulta. I stole this lip gloss. I was 10, between 10 and 13, I'll say. I stole the lip gloss in Orland, Ulta, and I'm sorry, y'all, to anybody um, that works there or owns the place. I, I've never been back because I've been so embarrassed and I um, have really bad anxiety issues. But I was so anxious in bed as a 10, however old I was. I was so embarrassed and so nervous that they were going to be talking about this on Fox News. My parents watched the news all night or whatever. So I wrote a note, put the lip gloss in it, and set it outside their door, apologizing for everything I had done. Couldn't take it. I couldn't even go to sleep. I was sick. Instead of giving me a spanking, I remember that was a discussion, were, were they going to spank me? And my mom voted no, they weren't going to spank me. But what I did have to do, I don't remember what, I, I think I did get like punishment. But I had to write a letter apologizing and take it to Ulta and give it to the store manager or whatever. That's why I've never been back. Because what if that lady still works there? I'm really too, I, I don't know. I feel I'm so embarrassed. That's my least favorite thing is being embarrassed and like put out. But I don't know. I, I was honest after I was dishonest and stealing but I just feel like the punishment was so crazy and so like traumatizing that I just feel just terrified to do anything wrong so I don't know if I just didn't get spankings because I was a good kid or the better kid or if I just was better at sneaking and hiding things um, than my brothers I think that when you are punished a lot or you're afraid or you're you know raised in fear of punishment you might learn to be sneaky and learn how because kids are going to do whatever. So, you know, I'm trying to weigh out the options of being too strict and making you 
fear me and making you be a sneak and be deceitful? Um, or do I teach you to come to me and talk to me and am, is that gonna make me too lenient? Like the cool mom on Mean Girls. I'm not trying to be like that. I'm not about to kick it. I'm not gonna do any of that stuff with you until you're of age, but it's like there's a balance. There's somewhere in between where to do this. But I was wondering if there's gonna be a difference with, with girls and boys and who, like I think the girls' attitudes I was, as soon as they told me Dash was not a little girl, I was like, okay, well, I'm not gonna have to deal with the attitude, because if I have a daughter that's anywhere near the type of child I feel like I was, just back talking and sm I have a smart, I feel like I have a smart mouth. I always have something to say for everything. Um, so, you know, I've always get in trouble for that and talking back and having too much to say and, you know, contradicting my mother. That was one of her no-nos. Um, but I feel like it's important to say not to, Im well, I, I would, I think these people shouldn't punish their children for having emotions. So when kids are crying, it's not because they want to be a crybaby. You know, they're not crying because they want to be soft or crying because they are too emotional or dramatic. They're crying for a reason. That is an emotional response to something that you're feeling. So telling somebody that you shouldn't be crying, like, why are you crying? Like, now that's why you're mad at the child because of the crying that they're doing. No, that's not going to make them stop crying. No, that's not going to make them feel better about their having emotions and being able to express their emotions to out loud to you or anyone else. So now you learn, you bottle things up. You feel like everything you, you do when you have a regular reaction is wrong or you can't do that because you're at church you're not allowed to cry because you're at church you're like um when I was a kid like if somebody were to ask me what's wrong with me I would get in trouble because I'm not pretending to be okay like I'm showing it all over my face now granted that could be annoying like I know when Dallas walks around and he had to snarl on his face like somebody did something to him like literally no one's done anything to you your whole life okay I know that because I'm here and I told you I don't do nothing I don't discipline but you're acting like you have like I got in trouble in the morning and now I have a I I'm sad I've cried the entire way somewhere and now I can't show on my face that I'm sad because too many people might be coming up to you saying oh what's wrong with Jordan what's wrong with Jordan what's and that's like that alone now I'm being punished for feeling or having a feeling or having emotions and that kind of taught me to hide my emotions um, to bottle things up or to feel disconnected with my emotions and not understand why I'm feeling like that. I always felt like I'm dramatic and I'm too much and I'm too emotional because that's what I've been told. That's been my experience. A lot of people, I think some people are less expressive when they're, with their emotions than other people, but everybody has emotions. You know, I express them differently. I express joy differently than someone else. I express, some people cry when they're happy. You know, like, it's like being mad at somebody for crying when they're happy, when that's a normal emotional response to their emotions. You can't be mad at a child and, and like, plant those seeds of doubt of, like, is this my experience? Am I sad because I'm crying, which feels sad. So maybe, you know, now you start thinking, maybe I'm not sad. Maybe this isn't, you know, maybe I'm not feeling upset. And then you're like, your brain is all messed up. I don't know. I feel like maybe that's a personal thing, but I... I don't sometimes feel like I have the right to be sad. I don't feel like my circumstances are tough enough to be sad. Like I, the, one of the little things that can be said to confuse a child, to make them feel like you are wept, like being angry with them, being emotional is saying somebody else has it worse. You know, like, you, oh, you're crying, but you have all this, these toys. You got all this stuff in your house and it's like, that doesn't make me not sad. You know, someone else is more sad than I am, but I'm still sad. So I know that that might not have been an intention to make somebody feel like that or to make me feel like that. But if you say, you know, you need to eat all the rest of your food because somebody else is starving, you know, that's a, it's a, just a, ba a kind of a reverse way of, of doing that, you can do it a different way. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's another way to do it. And you might have more positive results if you started off with in a positive way. So um, my advice is maybe to have a more, my advice to have a more emotionally intelligent adult that you, you know, trying to raise your children to be emotionally intelligent adults, is teaching them to be one with their emotions and to be able to control them. Be aware, with the, be aware of them and then know how to direct them. 
like I have ADHD. I am hype. I have OCD. Like I'm manic. I am, you know, I, I, I hyper focus on things, but I also can't concentrate. Like it's like, I can't concentrate on anything. But then when I come, when it comes to cakes and when it comes to like this business and this podcast, like I am hyper focused, like I am in tune. I wake up, I go to sleep feeling and breathing it. Right. But why, like anything else I can't, you know, um, I can't concentrate on, but I use it as a superpower instead of as a disability or as a mental illness. I don't use it like that. So, but being taught to understand what these feelings are, feeling anxious. Okay, now how do you put your anxiety to good use? I sit and I cut things. I'm very meticulous about things. So I, I don't like to, if I don't like my boxes to be messed up, I like to do them myself or showing people exactly what I want. Like, don't say oh jordan you're crazy you're too you're too meticulous we don't want to help you please try to learn what i like to do like learn my way of processing because my perfectionism and my ocd and all that that stuff has worked for me you know it's it's working all these things that have been produced are working for me because i try to make them work for me instead of working against me i have adhd i cannot control that i can't control that my anxiety is you know, feeling unmanageable at times, but I can't control how I function when I'm when I become aware of it. Like, how are you going to work through it? How are you going to not have a panic attack? I'm still getting there. Some days are harder than others, but I just I want to be more solution based. And teaching kids to be solution based creates adults that can come up with solutions rather than just complaining and having a lot of problems. I didn't get diagnosed with ADHD until my adulthood, but um, I do think I showed signs of having some type of attention deficit for a long time. Um, and I think instead of it being addressed as, you know, you having some type of issue with concentrating and focusing, um, you know, we're mad because you can't, not my, not, this is not about my parents. I mean, in school and everything, you just, if you aren't told that you have attention issues, you get in trouble for having attention issues. Like if I'm not suffering, I'm just suffering a little bit. So I should be able to control it. I don't think that's really fair to expect kids or anybody to be sit, be able to sit and be interested in something that they're not wholeheartedly interested in with a hundred percent of gusto. Like, how are you supposed to concentrate on that? You want me to sit in every single period of school in every subject and give it the same amount of energy and you know that some classes are going to keep your attention better than others. Like across the board, that doesn't make any sense. You instantly are going to be more in tune and more able to focus in the class that you have your interest, which is why I say it's been working for me to focus on my cakes and my things is because I'm good at them, so it's easy to focus on them. If I had a job that I wasn't good at, um, I, it would probably be harder for me to focus on it and harder for me to focus on a project. It was always harder for me to make cakes if I didn't like the design. You know, it's like, I don't really like this design, but this is my job. But when I love the cake, I can pour my heart in it. So I don't know if that's a symptom of ADHD or if that's a symptom of being a human. and being more attracted and enthused by things that you are good at and thrive and you know and are excellent at or can become excellent at like how do you ever learn how to how to focus on your talents if you're supposed to treat everything with the same you know enthusiasm if i'm supposed to treat every subject the same way how will i know that you're really 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 good at math you know because you love math like a kid comes home like oh my god i was so great at this math test i'm gonna be like dang you know you really like math because nobody's like love you know unless now you're gonna be a scientist boy let me buy you a science kit that's what i would do personally you know i just i think that you start pouring into it as soon as, as, soon as dallas says he likes anything we're, we're we're diving in you want a youtube channel we're diving in you want to do your um we did do science projects. We did um, the cooking. The, uh, they have their kitchen sets, and they have 500 food items around my house. I have microphones. They show interest in instruments. I'm buying instruments because I want you set. Even if it changes next week, I think that it's important to tell your kids that you are interested. Show your kids that you're interested in what they're interested in. And noticing that, you have to also see the things they're not interested in that's how you can tell the difference so putting kids in a box of ADHD at a young age is kind of stifling you know um, 
because what happens if they don't identify their you know interest because they have to focus on everything that's really the point I think a lot of kids get put in a bubble at a young age of you can't sit still and they're um, marked as a bad kid or you know now you're in special classes or now you have to get talk to the teacher but teachers need to and a lot of teachers do understand that all these kids have different learning styles you're going to get a better reaction out of some kids from them taking notes like me I love taking notes versus doing a hands-on activity so you have to switch it up if you're going to keep the interest of the child the same with parents switch up your activities with them do different things and then when you start noticing that they like this stuff keep doing that until they like something different and you know how kids are they like something different every other week so that's hard it's a lot of work like I said but that's that's the part that I'm willing to do that's the emotional work and the work as a parent I will go any length to do is to make sure that they're good and they feel okay about who they are whatever that means so I have I have suffer from depression for a long time. I've always suffered from anxiety and ADHD and all these new issues that are coming about. I still need to feel good about Jordan and the things Jordan is capable of doing with these different, you know, issues. So being proud of myself for being able to function and, you know, raising these boys and being a, a good wife and being able to, you know, complete tasks, just giving myself a break because you're doing a good job, bitch. You're doing great. You're doing great because you have all these other things fighting against you. It's like no weapons formed against you, but it's a lot of weapons, y'all. Sometimes there's a lot of weapons coming from everywhere. It's, it's the stuff... I don't know if I'm just having a quarter life crisis and I'm sitting and I'm thinking about all this stuff that's happened in my past and even present. Like, I always am psychoanalyzing myself. Like, why are you the way you are? Like, how we watch serial killer documentaries. Like, how did they get here? I'm trying to figure out how did we get here? How did I become so, like, out of touch? Like, how did I become out of touch? But I'm like, I, I, I'm aware of my feelings, but I feel like I can't, I don't have the right to feel them. I don't have the, um, I don't even have the time to feel them. I don't have the time to feel a feeling because if I feel it, then I'm sitting in it. Somebody asks you if you're okay, you crumble, but I'm not really used to people asking me if I'm okay and noticing that my face is um, a little more sad. If you notice, like I notice everything with my kids. I, I think I try to, at least I can't say that. I don't know, but I try, I try really hard, but I know Dallas notices when the slightest bit of glim gl glimmer is out of my eye. He's like, are you okay? Because he's emotionally intelligent. Whereas I might not see it in another person or my peer, but my son sees it in me because when I see him sad or upset, we're like, are you okay? So all of my kids, that's, their, that's one of their first little phrases. You're okay? Always, I want you to just check on your people. Like check on your kids, check on them. If they're looking sad or they're walking around looking down, there's a reason for all of this stuff. There's a reason rather than you just being like, stop, stop frowning. What's wrong with you? You got all these toys. Like that's like, dang. They, I, they literally could be having all these same feelings. Like we were people. We were kids a little bit ago. So, because I'm not so far from that, I feel like I'm kind of trying to dial back and rewrite history in a way with my kids, and not just like in the way where it's just I'm not loosey goosey with this parenting thing. Like I'm not. I'm. I'm trying to be as intentional as I can because this is gonna matter later. This is gonna reflect in the way that my sons treat their wives um, This is and their friends and their children and their peers and their bosses and their employees. I don't know, like how I treat them, how Dez and I treat each other, how they see me treat my mother, how they see me interact with my brothers, that's what you're gonna carry on with you. So you, we know that kids are sponges. Yes, they're gonna curse anyway, but it's like, that's not the biggest thing that you need to be worried about. So when people are like, you're cursing around your kids, but it's like, I pour into my kids and I pull, uh, you know, like my kids know what's up. They know what's up. They're more emotionally intelligent because they see me upset and maybe I will dial back, but I know that they know that I'm that I'm angry. They know what, what that emotion is. I'm not just an adult and that's why I can say the word. I'm mad and this is mommy acting out just like you're acting out and I'm sorry later. I'll tell you sorry later if I have to act out, but just just telling kids not to do stuff just because, like, I don't know. I don't know if that affected y'all like it affected me, but 
I have the worst authority issues now. Like, I do not do well with authority. I hate all authority figures. I dropped out of college. I don't like to be told what to do. I don't want to be told. I love taking notes. I'll take notes about the news. I'll take notes about anything because that's, like, I'm very um, melodical like that. Like, I just, that calms me down writing things out. But school was just not for me. I don't want to be tested at the end of taking these notes. Like, what? It, why does it matter what I'm going to do with this information later? Why do I have to be tested about what I learned from this? So... I instantly resist authority. I don't like you telling me when the projects do. I don't like you telling me what time to come to class because you said so. Like, I don't, I think that was like a ingrown thing that I'd learned to hate. Um, I never had a job. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't imagine somebody telling me I cannot stay home with my child or for, because I don't feel well. I can't imagine asking somebody if I can go on a vacation. And some people, they don't have that big of an issue. I'm not saying I look down upon people that can do that. I think that's great. I just have such an issue with you telling me what to do because I feel like I've only been told what to do. Like, it's just because I said so, because I said so. Like, my kids, like I said, are not going to hear that. If I say because I said so, I'm going to tell you why. Um so I can build a better relationship with the people. It's just a respect thing, not a I'm older than you thing. It's just respect everybody and respect yourself. And it's not like it's the power struggle shouldn't be there. Um, taking yourself from being like an adult to a, being mean to a kid, that's kind of like bullying how I, how I take it. Like, I am... I'm very conscious of me being bigger than Dallas. So when I when he, I see him hitting denim, I'm like, you're so much bigger than him. So when I'm sitting reasoning with him after I yell and tell him, don't hit my baby, because um, he's a baby, you know, I do my whole yelling thing. Now I sit you down and I'm explaining, you're so much bigger than him, he's powerless. He's hitting you and that doesn't even hurt you. You know, he's pulling your hair because his hand got stuck because you have curly hair. Like, he's a baby. He doesn't know what's going on. He do, he can't feel what you feel. And then when I'm talking to him, that's the same thing I should be saying to myself. We are bigger than them. They are not as emotionally as intelligent as us. They are, they, they are powerless. They only want to look to us for love. They don't want to look to us for punishment. They don't want to look to us like they're, they're looking for answers. And when you give them a smack or whatever, pop them. I guess that's not the right answer. Like, I guess, you know, I don't want them to hit each other. But then I, you know, will pop them because they hit each other. Like, it just really sounds like I'm, you know, talking to myself. Like, stop doing that. Stop doing that. So I'm trying to, the positive parenting thing I told y'all, I'm trying to learn about that a little bit more. Um, my patience is so thin. I sit there and I'm trying to talk it out with them. Like, what's wrong? Like, what, are you all right? Like, and then... By the time they sit there and scream at you and now they knock your food out your plate, like now they're having a tantrum. Now they're throwing down the positive parenting goes out of the window. But I definitely do try. That's my first thought. My first thought is to go go high. You know, when the kids go low, you go high. I try not to get down there low with them and because it just creates more tears and more, you know, a longer tantrum if you're upset. Now they're embarrassed, now they're upset. So it's just a slippery slope to bedtime if you punish them the traditional way, in my opinion, and from my experience. Um, I, like I said, I have an, a, um, a really huge authority issue because I think I was just blindly obedient to authority figures. And so that me dropping out of school, I think contributed to that. Um, me, like my relationship with any like like why I don't have a boss why I run my own business I really only listen to myself I only really want to listen to myself I can only tell myself when to come in only me and I can tell myself when not to come in and you know I'm I'm a really hard boss I don't give myself any days off but I do you know I I know that about myself so that's why I think I am an entrepreneur so I can kind of be in control of that and it's like my own willpower and it's not because somebody said so I'm not going to work because anybody told me to but myself so I think that's just like an in internal thing I think that's a positive reaction to the whole situation it can be it can become positive but just being like what if somebody becomes resistant to authority when it comes to police officers because of this and now they just hate when somebody's telling them to walk the straight line because I don't want you just telling me something to do what what if it turns into that? What if that's why people don't want to just 
Like, you tell your kids, like, just put your hands on the wheel and do, like, I understand you need to do that with a police officer, but if they just learn to hate authority, they might feel like that's why they need to talk back. You know, that's why they have attitude problems. It's just like their resistance to authority as a whole. I know when I first got married and like when me and Diz, when he got back from the army, us living together for the first time, I don't, I'm not on nothing. Like, I, I just don't know if I want to come home because you said so. Like, I'm coming home, but not because you said so. Like, I just, you know, like, that's my issue. Like, we had to work through that. I just don't, I'm going to be everywhere I'm supposed to be, but I just need it to be my own free will. Everything has to be my own will. I'm very stubborn when it comes to that. But I mean, I'm on my best behavior with, like I said, with work, I'm, I'm right on point. But it's because I have good work ethic. It's just I, like I think that, you know, that also has to be a factor. There's too many other factors you have to fight against if you have to just initially don't want nobody telling you anything. Like, I don't like anything unless it's my idea. And I think that's definitely my toxic trait. I have a lot of ideas, so I'm, I'm rolling. But it's like if I can't ever take anybody else's suggestions, you know, how far can you go? Um, now, some of the punishments that my mom uh, gave me were... I think they fit the crime necessarily, but I just, it was really weird the, the way that, not just being on punishment, for instance, like you're not just in trouble. I got, a, my dad took me to get a tattoo. My mom and my dad are divorced. They got divorced when I was two. Um, I've had a relationship with my dad uh, my whole life, but we didn't see him that often. So one time when I was um, 16, I think it was my senior year, I went to his house. I don't know when the last time I had been to his house and he took me to get a tattoo. But he's a parent, so I'm like, this is great, you know, a parent's taking you. Of course, I knew I was not supposed to do it, but me being sneaky um, and wanting what I wanted and being stubborn, I did it. And my dad was doing it, so I knew I was going to have, you know, have that on my side. Um, but my mom found out. I kept it real low, you know. She didn't find out for a minute, a couple months. Um, and when she found out, it was the week before prom, though. So, perfect time for a punishment, you know. That's <laughs> what she was thinking I wasn't allowed to go to the Key Lime Cove Park because I was gonna be wearing a swimsuit and the swimsuit would expose her 16 year old daughter with a tattoo and that would not be tolerated so I could not go on the after prom activities because she found out about the tattoo that I gotten months ago granted yeah I should have got in trouble but I just think that that was a really horrible punishment like why would you take away the one day that can never ever 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 come back for a tattoo you know like, I don't know that type of stuff irritates me I ain't gonna lie so I don't like that punishment for the record I my mom used to say that we didn't have a curfew because we weren't allowed to go anywhere you know like oh no they don't have curfews but I never ever went anywhere I was not allowed to like go to parties and stuff like that they were really strict so but for I don't know why it's not like I had done something wrong to deserve them to be like to deserve a strict parenting style um like you need to reel me in like you've been acting too wild like I didn't act wild I was never wild until college or anything you know from the second I was there and when I went to college I was like I, I we never had a tv so I didn't have tvs in my room I was only allowed to watch one hour of tv a week my on oh, the weekend our tv time had to equal our reading time so now I have a negative association with reading that sounds like a punishment it sounds like something bad that I have to do bef before something good that I want to do so now I don't want to read that's not recreational for me you know um if I if my room was messy when I was at school or my my drawers were not you know folded I would come home and all my clothes would be on the floor in the middle of my room so I could redo it but it's like now I just won't put anything in the drawers so that's fine so now I'm a hoarder perfect now my room's chaotic and now everything's a mess and that's like it didn't you know that contributing to feeling depressed you know your space needs to be tidy but the stuff was away and it's like why are you looking for stuff to punish me about you know and this is not to be negative to my mom but I'm just looking back when I'm trying not to do things I don't want to go in Dallas's room to see if his shoes are lined up so that I can be mad if his shoes weren't lined up if I never was going to go in his room to begin with close the door you know it's that simple not to have a problem and not to create, you know, I don't know. I was, <laughs> this is I have, this is a tangent, but I, oh, I'm in a mood. So on Thanksgiving, the first year Dez and I got together, Dez, he came over for Thanksgiving and it was at my house. My grandmother asked him to go up to my bedroom with her 
to show him how messy my room was. It was a mess, y'all, a mess. And to tell him that if he married me, this is what he had to look forward to. First of all, this is his first time ever coming to my house, you know? Like, this is, why is that something that you would do? Now, it's something, okay, fine, it's quirky, it's funny, fine. You think that's funny, but I was embarrassed, you know, first of all. But now it's like, fine. I use that all the time now. You knew what you were getting into, yes. But you could have found out a different way instead of putting somebody out like that. And like I said, I didn't think there was any point of cleaning my room if it was never going to be clean enough. And if I can come home after I think my room is clean enough and it's going to be destroyed, I don't want to, you know. I, I just feel like that those type of punishments that I felt like didn't make any sense, I still don't think they make any sense. So um, I don't want to repeat those things with my kids because I know how that impacted me and how I look to, you know, I, if Dez is, you know, he, he does the laundry and folds up the clothes and I put it, you know, it's just like I don't want to do certain things because that's stuff I didn't want to do before. And I know that it's not right, but I'm stubborn. Like, I don't want to be this type of person sometimes. Like, I'm really like, ugh, I just don't want to do it, so I don't want to do it. And there's a better way to be. I'm learning through it, but it's just like I could have never had these type of feelings to begin with. All right, obviously I'm still mad about the TV thing, guys, but I'm going to get over it eventually. But I think that the, my takeaway from that situation in particular is that maybe the lesson that you thought you were teaching of not having a TV in your kid's room so that they didn't watch TV um, growing up or didn't watch, stay up and watching TV all night, the alternative is a person who didn't have a TV in their room and went away to school and watched TV for days and days and days and watched eight seasons of something and was overboard. And I still watch a lot of TV. I love binge watching stuff. I like just having a TV in my room. So I really can hardly go to sleep without a TV right now. Where Diz, or I mean, Diz doesn't have a TV in his room either. But I know that other kids that I've had or other people that have had TVs in their room didn't turn out to be serial TV watchers like they weren't they're not and that's not the reason so it's like what what was the reason for not having a television in your room if we shouldn't have a TV in our room because that's expensive and that's really you don't need a TV then that makes sense to me but not because you'll turn out better because that's not necessarily the case um, some people that watch TV don't growing up don't even watch TV later on in their lives because of that so I just I say all that to say sometimes the overall lesson is not what you think is going to be. So being intentional with my kids, they have TV, they have a TV in their room and days that I want them to go to sleep or I want them to lay down and relax and have them all three winding down, having a TV in their room, I'm sure that I, I'm not screwing them up later on in their life because they have a TV in their room. Um, I don't feel like I have to repeat that same behavior just because I didn't have a TV in my room that they don't need a TV in their room because I would would have liked that. So some things that I feel like I, I dealt with, I want to redo, but there are some things I never even thought of that are coming into play that I, I, I have no reference. I have no nothing to pull back from. I always like to go back and be like, well, what did my mom do? Or what did this mom do? Or what did that mom do? But all these different things that are presenting themselves, my kids are coming up with new ways to surprise me every day, new ways to challenge us every single day. And we're thinking on the fly of how to positively parent for maybe three times, but then we might raise our voice. But if we do get to the point where we raise our voice, we're like, all right, let's apologize. Let's try to regulate our emotions better when we're, the next time we're in a situation. Dez and I, we have a conversation about a lot of stuff of how we handle situations um, after they happen. And I think that that kind of, the whole process of being vocal and talking about things, it's, it's helping us as our family unit. We know that we are in charge, but I want you guys to respect I want you to respect us, but respect yourselves. Like, be the kids that you know, you know, that's not, what do we do? Like, when, when situations happen with, with Dallas, Diz is like, is that how I treat you? Where are you learning this from? Because we know you're getting it from somewhere. Are you learning this from TV? Are you seeing somebody, you know, hitting somebody because you see it on TV? Because we don't hit people when we're mad. I want to know where you're grabbing this from. You're seven years old. Where are you grasping these concepts of, of crime and punishment before you know what, what goes on. But these TV shows where the kids, the, the characters are grabbing people and choking them. Now you think that's a reaction to being mad is to choke somebody. So that's when you decide what type of TV they watch. Now the reason I'm telling you I don't want you to watch this TV show is because you started choking somebody after you were watching the show. It's not just because I said so. 
You know, it's not just because this show is stupid. It's because you're not learning the right things from it. And there's always a reason. So the whole just because thing is kind of one of the things I'm trying to break the habit of and explaining myself to my kids because they deserve an explanation because they're curious just like me. They want to know when things bad happen in our lives or things unfortunate or things that we didn't plan happen. We're like, why? Kids are the same way. They're, and then we're sitting there with nothing to give them, no, no explanation. If we're having a bad day, you see mommy and daddy frustrated. I want to say, Dallas, we had a rough day today. So now you know every reaction after that makes sense. Like, be open and honest with each other, with you and your partner, you and your family, you and your kids, as open as you have to be. But don't punish kids for not being able to read your minds, you know, and know how to handle things that you yourself can't even handle. And I know I'm talking to myself because I'm just, I'm trying to learn this stuff too. I'm not perfect. I'm not, I'm not even close to perfect. I'm not even trying to be perfect, but I just want my kids to know that I'm trying. So every day is something different. Every day, you know, I'm just trying to be a better mom for them. And when I talk to them about right and wrong, I really want to tell them that it's about you have a decision. Every every cho- every something that happens, you have a decision to make. You have a choice. You can either get mad and flip a chair over, or you can get mad and go take a walk and take a breather. You have to make the choice. So no matter, like, I'm, Dallas is very smart. He's very bright. But I'm like, the thing that makes you, like, once you lose control, you're not as smart as you think you are anymore. You have to be able to control yourself. You have to be able to control your anger and, you know, reason. I think that my my parenting style is non-traditional um but it's working for us because we're like it's a it's a journey of self-discovery and you know us and our kids we're growing up at the same time i am taking all of the parenting advice that you guys have for me about positive parenting and things that are um more intentional parenting i would love to hear your thoughts i would love to hear um, your experiences. What What is your experience with effectiveness of uh, timeout chairs? That's my number one question. Please leave a comment. Thank you guys so much for listening to the podcast. This really has been the best time for me just sitting and recording. I wish you guys knew how um, therapeutic this was for me. Feel free to like, subscribe, and follow us so you never miss an episode. Welcome to the support group.